Good afternoon, and welcome to day three of the 2022 Academic Symposium. We are so happy that all of you could join us today. Before we would begin, I would ask um, all of you to silence your cell phones. Just take a second to do that. I would also like to thank all of the students and mentors for participating in today's events as, as well as this entire week. Um, we would like to thank their mentors for all the time that's been spent, and um, I'm grateful for the big crowd today as you are supporting your um, fellow peers. Each presenter will share his or her research for 10 to 20 minutes. At the conclusion, they will ask if you have any questions. We will have a mic that we will pass around for questions. Um, once that's finished, you will have um, five or so minutes to um, take a restroom break, get a drink or snack, and then we'll begin promptly with the next presentation. I will go ahead and introduce, um, we'll get started, and our first presenter is Felipe Santana, um, who will share research on cognitive analytics. Felipe's mentor is Dr. Dana Walker. Felipe, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Kristen, and thank you everyone for coming. Uh, my name is Felipe Santana, and I'm a senior here at Queen's University, and today I'll be talking about cognitive analytics. Uh, so, cognitive analytics uh, is a field within uh, business analytics, and what is business analytics? It's when we use collected data to identify and analyze trends, patterns, and the relationship between cause and effect. And why we do this? We do this with the purpose of making data-driven decisions, which allow us to make like, better decisions based on the data we gather. So there are four analytic levels. The first one is the descriptive analytics, which explains and analyzes the past. We have also predictive analytics, which use the past to explain and predict the future. We also have prescri prescriptive analytics, which identifies the best action and, or the best course of decision based on the uh, decision, uh, based on the data we gather. And we also have diagnostic analytics, which explains the reason why the results we got uh, happen. So what is cognitive analytics? It's, uh, cognitive analytics is used advanced technology uh, that can analyze large data sets to discover patterns in data, recognize objects from an image, understand the meaning of a text, and process voice comments. Um, all of those are examples of what cognitive analytics can do, but today we're gonna to be focusing on discovering patterns in data. So how can we apply cognitive analytics to solve real problems and business uh, problems we, we face daily? We're gonna be looking into Red Ventures. It's a case study. Uh, Red Ventures is an internet marketing company that provides online experiences that brings together brands and customers, and they use technology uh, to help clients in telecommunications or financial service to attract new customers. So they collect the data since the customer becomes aware of the product the company is offering until the stage where, uh, when they purchase the credit card. So the credit card issuers are actually the clients for Red Ventures. And what is the problem we're facing here? Uh, so we know that business in the credit card industry are constantly investing in marketing to attract new customers. And although credit card debt in the United States has been continually increasing over the past six years, the individuals are not seeking to increase the number of credit cards they have. And therefore, the revenue from issuing credit cards has been declining for credit card issuers. And the purpose of this study is to understand what is happening, how revenue is associated with each credit card, and how conversions are associated with uh, credit card uh, each ap application and the credit cards. So wh what is conversion? Conversion is when a web visitor completes a desired goal for the company. For this case study, it's, uh, it is specifically when a customer, uh, feel, after filling out an application, actually purchases the credit card. And to solve that problem, we're gonna be using IBM Cognos Analytics, which is a software that allows us to make deep and complete analysis of the variables. It also uh, shows us how they associate each other with uh, using cognitive analytics. And 
it, we, it allows us like, to explore the data we, use, we gather and get some results. So the data we're going to be analyzing comes from online activities for financial service clients. It consists of 52,446 records, and the data covers over a period of five months, and it consists of credit cards they use applied for and the conversion when they actually bought the, the credit card, the revenue associated with each application, and some of the data collected here has been anonymized because uh, some of those informations are sensitive, so in order to keep the privacy, we anonymize the data. So this is an example of the data we collect. Uh, we have the date of the purchase. We have the web pages the customers are searching whenever they're making the purchase. We have the device they're using to make that purchase, the browser they're using, uh, country, region. We also have the product, and we can see that the merchant uh, name has been uh, anonymized to protect the privacy of the company. Uh, we also have the conversion of those purchases and the revenue re generated from that purchase. So we're going to be looking now into uh, revenue analysis. Uh, we're going to see which variables have the stronger relationship with revenue. So revenue is going to be our field of interest. And we can see that since revenue is our field of interest, it's the circle in the middle. And we have the variables around. And the thicker the line, the stronger is the relationship between the variable and the field of interest. So we can see that actually the merchant, the product, and the credit uh, requested for filling out the application are this, the variables that have the stronger relationship with revenue. So we're going to look into revenue and credit score. We can ask, like, what is, the, uh, what is the relationship between revenue and credit score? And does a better credit mean uh, higher revenue? And which web pages the customers are searching whenever they're making their purchase? We can see here the, the credit status that uh, the credit card issuers require to fill out the application. We can see revenue, and the colors are, uh, represent the, the web pages they're searching for whenever they're making the purchase. And we can see that actually whenever the company is asking for a good credit is the, and the, the customers are looking for guides, is where the highest uh, revenue is being generated. And we would think like excellent credit would generate more revenue, but actually, if we think about it, um, people with excellent credit, they already have a credit card, so they're not looking to get new ones. Actually, people who, need, who are being requested to fill out a good credit uh, application are the ones that are looking for getting a new one to make other purchases. And we can also use a heat map, uh, which consists of like the darker is the, the color, the stronger is the relationship between the variable and revenue. So we can see that the same results here. Good credit whenever, uh, whenever clients are searching in the guides page and the uh, credit card, the, the credit status requested is good credit. That's where the highest revenue has been uh, uh, generated. And after that, excellent credit is the second one. So when you look into average revenue, do we get the same results as when we're looking at over, overall uh, revenue? And does the credit status that had the highest revenue also had the highest average revenue? The heat map shows that actually that's not true uh, because the credit status required for the credit cards uh, that generated the highest average revenue was whenever the credit cards are, the credit card issuers are not requesting a credit card a credit status, and we can see that people are looking for uh, different web pages whenever they're making that research and filling out that application. So we can also ask uh, which date had the highest revenue, and what other questions can we ask with this information? We can see here that. April 10th, 2018 was when the company had actually the highest revenue. And that led us to new questions. We can go to marketing department and ask them, like, uh, why, did, why did that happen? Was it uh, 
uh, marketing strategy we had, a uh, campaign, was it a project we were developing and selling at that point that generated more revenue, or is it a specific date of uh, during the year that actually generates more revenue uh, every year? So those are questions that can uh, guide us to better development of products. Now we can see uh, what device the customers were using when they are applying and purchasing the credit cards, and which device had the stronger relationship with revenue. So we can see that the people, whenever they are making the purchase of the credit cards, they're mostly using, using desktop, and then mobile, and then tablet. And then we can ask, like, why are they doing this? Usually when you're using your desktop, you're at home, so you feel more comfortable about making purchase. And usually, like, people feel more secure whenever they are purchased through their desktop instead of their uh, mobile or tablet. We can also present the data we gather in different uh, ways. We, we use mostly graphs, but we can also use dashboards, which combine different graphs to present different information. We have here an example of a dashboard generated for this study. We have revenue by date colored by conversions, conversions and revenue by clicks, revenue by date colored by clicks, and all of them are showing different graphs for each uh, analysis. So the conclusions for this study are that customers with different credit ratings, they generate different revenues, and we can see that there's a strong relationship between credit status and revenues and that actually credit cards that require good credit had the highest revenue. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Walker for all the instruction and all the guidance, and I'll be opening for questions now. I noticed you said it, that it was um, when they, not when they filled out the application, but when they bought the application, Mm -hmm. bought the actual credit card. Do you know what the, the difference was? So um, the revenue wasn't generated until they purchased it or they just wanted them to apply for it? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, usually like when they apply for, the, uh, they ju just fill out the application. It doesn't mean they're generating revenue. So this study that shows like which ones are actually like after filling, uh, sometimes they can start filling out the application, they don't. Uh, finish it uh, because like, uh, they saw that they need uh, this credit uh, status for a final application, so they give up. And so this study actually looks into the ones that were filled out and actually generated revenue. They actually completed the purchase of the credit card and they're ready to use it. So one of the purposes of the dashboard is that your study was for a certain period of time, right? There were so mm -hmm. many days. The pur pur purchase of your dashboard is you can actually, the client can run this over different periods of times and see trends, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so the dashboard's for the client to repeat the process. So once you design the model, they can then use that on an ongoing basis and see whether ad campaigns or whatever are working for them. And I think we've got a kind of a, the conversion is a confusing word to a lot of people. Conversion is that I'm carrying a visa from First Bank and now I'm carrying American Express from somebody else. So that's what's, what we say a conversion. You're converting them into a credit card and they're looking at the revenue that they're getting. So conversion is kind of an odd term in this particular study. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, I want to just ask about the credit limit. Is that uh, something uh, will affect the revenue too? Uh, that's actually a good question because like um, usually when people are filling out for applications like for credit cards, they want to know the credit limit uh, they're asking for. For this study, uh, we don't have the credit limit. We focus on credit status. So the, um, whenever you're filling out the application, they want to know like, uh, do you have a good credit or do you have an excellent credit? and then you can get the, the credit card. But that's also like a, uh, another question that f through this uh, analysis, we can send it to the marketing department and ask them like, uh, what was the relationship between credit limit and the revenue generated?
Yeah, I had, what is a guide? You said like the good credit with mm -hmm. a guide mm -hmm. got the most responses. What's a guide? Uh, so guide is a specific web page. So whenever the customers were looking for credit cards, they search through specific web pages. And we can see that through this study that uh, the, whenever customers are looking into guides, like guides with their credit cards, that's when um, the most, gener uh, most revenue is being generated. Because uh, uh, people can look for, uh, we saw cards or when they're looking for guides. And guides was um, the general web page that actually drove people to actually fill out the application. Yeah, I can elaborate on that. These are specifically pages that are either, they're driven to them by QR codes or by campaigns or whatever. So they're meaningful to the marketing department. They may not mean anything to us, but it's a particular page that they're going to. So they may entice them to that page, ask them more questions before they ask them to uh, apply for the card. So that's why guides and the card are kind of, they're, nomad, they're names that the marketing department labeled them. Thank you, Felipe. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, we will take a short break and um, we will begin again at two o'clock. Thanks for joining us.